That's All right, let's season. transition here, guys. We got to talk about more from Portland. So much to talk about today. And in the Phil Knight Invitational, Villanova falling to Portland, 83-71. to 71. Rob, I, I see you fist pumping. What just happened quickly? Uh, you quickly. can't just call, keep going with Villanova. I'm not jinxing it. Okay. Villanova loses to Portland, 83-71. to 71. Villanova is 2-4. and four. I've got so many thoughts on this, but I want to tee each one of you up here. What is going on? with the Villanova Wildcats right now. So I'll, I'll go, I'll, let me take this one first, Matt, because I have yeah. pretty strong opinions on this. I get very frustrated when people are coming out here and saying things like, oh, Kyle Neptune can't coach or Villanova's wild. The program's dead. It's, it's in a free fall. It's just like, come on, man. Like, look, this Villanova team right now, one, they are transitioning into lose uh, from losing one of the greatest coaches that we've ever seen. Right. Jay Wright, I don't think anyone can make an argument against the fact that Jay Wright is one of the greatest coaches we've ever seen. He was probably at the peak of his game, top of his game when he retired. Um, they are also doing that while losing an all-American point guard that was there for five years in Colin Gillespie and making that transition. They don't have a point guard to replace him unless you count Chris Archidiacono, who uh, frankly is not good enough, or Mark Armstrong, who is a freshman who is not quite ready to, to play at this level just yet. And if he is, then I, I mean, I don't know why Kyle's not playing him. Um, Second part of it, their top two players are not healthy. Justin Moore was their was their second best player last season, would have been a preseason All-American this year if he had not torn his Achilles in last year's NCAA tournament. They might have won a national title last year if he had not torn his Achilles. They don't have Cam Whitmore, who was, I mean, if you watch the U19s, one of the most impressive young players in that tournament, one of the most impressive freshmen coming into this class, and a guy that was projected as like a top five, six, seven pick in the NBA draft, one of the best freshmen in college basketball. They don't have those two guys. And they're playing guys that should be complementary pieces in starring roles. Eric Dixon, if he's your third option, great third option. Caleb Daniels, if he's your third option, great third option. Brandon Slater, if he's like your fifth best player on the floor, great fifth best player on the floor. But Caleb Daniels has to be your star. Eric Dixon has to be your star right now, your go-to guy. And that they're not good enough to thrive in those roles the way that you want a Villanova team to thrive in those roles. Combine all of that, with the fact that, and, and McCall, correct me if I'm wrong on any of what I'm about to say right now. Jay Wright is one of the best teachers of the game in college basketball. The absolute best. Villanova doesn't run, play, or didn't run plays when he was there. They had concepts. They had this idea of how they wanted to play. There are things that they would do to start the action, right? But the entire basis of their offense was, we're going to find a way to get a paint touch off the dribble, create a close or create help, draw a second defender, kick it out, create a closeout. That guy's going to attack. He's going to draw a help defender. You're going to kick it out, swing, swing, create a closeout. Just play basketball until you either get a shot at the rim, an open three, or a clean pull up. And there's different ways that you could start it, whether it was a ball screen or just dribble into a post up, whatever it is. But that was the basis of what they ran. They probably have like three or four plays in their entire playbook. Jay Wright taught them how to play, which is why you see so many Villanova guys end up being great role players in the NBA. Kyle is is what he's like 35 years old, man. It's his second year as a head coach. You cannot judge anything that he's doing in his second year as a head coach. First year at Villanova, replacing a legend, no point guard without his two best players. Should Villanova be better than they are? Maybe. They've lost a couple of really close games. They've been down big and fought all the way back. You cannot question the heart of that team. Should they have beaten Portland? Yeah, probably. Shante Liggins? A great coach is going to be a guy that's going to start yeah. a high major yes. very, very soon. So it's not great at Villanova right now. There are things that they need to fix. But to act like you can make any kind of sweeping generalizations beyond this team doesn't have their two best players, they don't have a point guard, they have a new head coach replacing a legend, is just laughable to me. Remember, all of us wanted like, – we thought Hubert Davis was the wrong hire like last February. They made the national title game six weeks later. I'm just yep. throwing that out there. I'm just saying that. So give the guy time. I don't think it's it's way too early to do anything other than say, "Oh man, this is a this is a tough start for Kyle." It's new for everyone, right? And and I know these both these situations get compared a lot, right? John Shire at Duke takes over for a legend, and Coach K, Kyle Nep Neptune at Villanova takes over for. But they're, you're talking about two completely different situations, okay? Yes. Kyle Neptune wasn't there last year. Kyle Neptune got his opportunity as a head coach and did a heck of a job at Fordham and injected excitement at that program and won games and competed in the Atlanta. 
you couldn't just walk into Fordham and get a win anymore. You, like it, Kyle Neptune injected excitement into Fordham last year, but it was his first year as a head coach. He goes back to Villanova. It's not like a situation he takes over Villanova. He, and this is no knock on any assistant coach that's there. This is no knock on any staff member that's there. But he takes over at Fordham. He gets to hire his entire staff. He gets to surround himself with people, his leadership style. He's taking over something completely different at Villanova. Not to mention he's taking over for a Hall of Famer and one of the greatest college basketball coaches of all time. So the expectations for him are there. But I completely agree with her. Just give – him some time he's a good coach he proved that he can coach he didn't forget how to coach these last six games he didn't forget you got to give everyone time in the program to get adjusted and develop and even allow him to develop as a coach it's only his second year as a head coach give him some I understand the expectations are high you're talking about a program that's you know what the top four program the last 10 years in the country I get that but Everybody in that program needs some time, and it's just way too early to pass judgment. And they're missing their two best players. Like, we can't and that. that. Every single team in the country, it doesn't matter who you are, every team in the country, every NBA team, every NFL team, every Major League Baseball team, every team that you coach with your for, for your kids in Little League, right? It doesn't matter. No matter what the team is, if you are missing your two best players, you are not going to be as good as you are when you have your two best players. Like, it's, it's, it's not that difficult of a concept. It's not us. Here's the deal with Villanova from this chair. In the last two games, Villanova has attempted 77 three-pointers. 77. They have taken 77 three-point shots. They've made 22 of them. That's 55 shots that didn't go in. Mm -hmm. And they lost by two points to Iowa State. And they should have lost to Portland, and they did. Villanova has had two constants over the last 10 years. Elite point guard play. Not good point guard play. Not great point guard play. Elite point guard play. Run run through the list of guys since 2013. Just run it through. Ryan Archidiacono mm-hmm. hands a torch to Jalen Brunson. Mm-hmm. Hands a torch to Colin Gillespie. Mm-hmm. Those guys aren't bad. They're not bad. They're not bad. You can go, you can go even before that. And you could go keep, before keep that. <laughs> you could go right down the line and bring up all of the great point guards. That's always been a constant to who they are. And you package that together with a Hall of Famer, an all-time great, who did one of the outstanding building jobs in the history of college basketball. So you package together a Hall of Famer with – might as well be Hall of Fame college-level point guards year in and year out. Now you take both of those and shut them down. And you didn't have a year, like Coach said, you didn't have a year to prepare, groom, go through a transition period. Mike Krzyzewski was very, very smart in, in how he designed everything. It's not that Jay Wright wasn't. It's not to take anything away from Jay. It's that we all can admit, Kyle Neptune admitted, This shocked him. This shocked him. This stunned him. There was no way to prepare fully for walking out of the tunnel on November 7th and being the Villanova head coach. And so what you're watching right now, folks, as much as it is surprising to see the results, look at who Villanova has. Look at all the new. It's like when you go to that neighborhood restaurant and you have always loved their burger. You've always loved their burger. And you go into that restaurant on a Saturday afternoon, and it's got the same name, the same burger listed, the same price, the menu looks the same. Even some of the staff members are the same. And you take a bite out of the burger, and you go, "Uh uh-oh, what the hell is this? And then you, you start to ask a waitress, your favorite waitress, Mary, and you say, Mary, what happened? Or what, what's wrong with this burger? And Mary goes, we changed ownership pants in the last couple of months, and they've decided to make some different decisions. In other words, right now, Villanova has the same business name out front. They've got the same menu, but the ingredients to that menu are not there. They're not what they've been. <laughs> you're, you're 100% right. I was waiting to figure out where you were going what with that. What an analogy. analogy. Yeah, with the, with the, what was the waitress's name? Was it Sarah? Mary. You said? 
Mary, Mary, she's Mary, very good. Mary was the, you still Mary's tipped good. her. You still tipped her the same because your kids and her kids play on the same summer baseball team. <laughs> but but the changing of it was a decision beyond Mary. They starting to go to a different farm for their cow, and the beef doesn't taste the same. It is. That's what that's what Villanova is right now. You're you're not used to seeing Villanova lose to Portland. You're not used to seeing it happen. But to the people on Twitter let me, who are saying, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, let me let me counter that real quick, Fanta, because we have in 2019, in 2018, 19, the year after they won the national title, they lost to Furman that year. They lost to someone else. They had like three bad losses heading into conference play, right? For sure. They still finished at number six seed because Jay Wright figured it out because he's great at what he does. He right. also they, had all his entire roster. He had his best players available. So let's pump the brakes. Pump the brakes, folks. Let's, let's realize what we're seeing right here with Kyle Neptune. Yep. And let's just like give him some time. You cannot judge an, a coaching tenure six games in. If year three, you still have Villanova struggling like this, okay, then we can have that conversation. Hell, we can even have that conversation year two. If, if this doesn't turn around and he has a bad start to next season, then we can start having that conversation, right? But you got to give him time. Sure. You have to give him some time. I understand it sucks, Villanova fans, but like, uh, you've had, you, know, breath. you you made the final four last year. You've won two of the last five national titles. Okay. You right. guys can, you, you can I, take a breath. All I right? get go, watch, go watch the highlights. Go watch the, uh, the game where you played Oklahoma in the final four. Okay. That'll I, make you feel a little bit better. Yeah. I get some Patriot fan vibes right now from the Villanova fans. <laughs> just, of like, just a little bit. Just a little, just a little. It's, almost, it's almost like they're from Philadelphia. Yeah. Fans. Right. Right. We've <laughs> only got 25 minutes. The time just flies on after dark. So we got a transition here. Go ahead, Rob. You got something. Jump in. Well, 